Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have musician and speaker Paul J. Kim. We'll see his video on chastity and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight our guest is Paul J. Kim. He's a speaker and a musician. Technically he's a beatboxer, which I'm not even sure what that is. But he is talented. I've seen the videos. And he's going to tell us tonight about, he's fairly recently married, has a couple kids. He's going to talk about maturing. And he speaks specifically to millennials and what he calls helping them to become adults. Adulting, he calls it. You know, how do we grow in maturity and virtue and what are things to look for? What are the means to do that? So he's got a lot of wisdom to share. We're now going to a short video by Paul Kim about chastity. What's going on, everybody? This is Paul J. Kim. What is chastity, you ask? Well, imagine a world where people do not use other people just for their bodies. Imagine a world where sex is not used to sell chicken wing, hamburgers, and beer. Imagine a world where Taylor Swift and Adele stop talking about their failed relationships. Imagine a world, my friends, where your friends are not crying on your shoulder because they got used and dumped. Imagine a world where the guy in the locker room is not talking about how he's just gawking at some girl's body or how he hooked up over the weekend. Imagine a world where people understand that love is not just a feeling, but it's an action. It's about willing the good of other people because they have been made and created in God's image and likeness. Chastity, in essence, is about controlling your sexual desire, not allowing your sexual desires to control your life. Chastity in my life has been a struggle as, as it has been for so many other people who walk on the face of the earth. But I will tell you that living out chastity the payoffs had been amazing. I will tell you now that as a husband, as a father of a beautiful baby girl and a, a beautiful child on the way, yes, we are priggers, I will tell you that it has prepared me to be the best husband and father that I can be. Now, do I still need work? Amen, hallelujah. Do I still stumble and fall at times? Amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. But I will tell you, there's a great freedom. There's a great joy and a great peace when chastity becomes a way of life. It is a movement towards total freedom, the ability to see another person and not be occupied with lusting after them or using them just for pleasure, no. So when I drive down the street nowadays and I see a billboard with a scantily clad woman, I don't use her as an object. In fact, I give her a name. I'm like, there is Jenny. And Jenny, man, times are tough, so she took this stanky job, and she is quite immodest right now. But I will pray for her so that she leaves that job, and she becomes a cloistered Carmelite nun, if that's God's will. But at any rate, chastity, whatever role or vocation you have in life, is essential to authentic love and freedom. Amen. Glory be. Hallelujah. Welcome, Paul J. Kim. Welcome to Uten. <laughs> so we're here at the Focus Conference in Indianapolis, and you're giving a talk to young adults about adulting tomorrow. That's right. You know, it's, it's one of these slang terms, adulting. As you would figure, it's how to be an adult in this world. And I think with the millennial culture, uh, sometimes millennials get a bad rap, like they're unmotivated, they don't want to do anything except stay at home and play Fortnite, which is a really popular video game. Mm. <laughs> you know, they want to live in their mom and dad's basements. But I don't think that's true. You know, obviously in the spectrum, you know, some people are, are more apt for, I'm just wanting to do my best and attack adult life, and others are maybe not so ready for that. Right. But one of the talks, as you mentioned, um, the title is called A Catholic Millennial's Guide to Adulting. Mm. So I'm 35 years old. I'm actually older than I look. Don't be fooled, it's the Asian genes. <laughs> and I moisturize daily, I think that helps. <laughs> but, you know, being a father, a husband, uh, two babies, one on the way, a minivan, a mortgage, and a life insurance policy, the end is near, you know. What uh, happened to your beatboxing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, I got all old. <laughs> no, but obviously along with speaking, I like to beatbox and, yeah. and incorporate music into my presentations. I do, obviously, a full-time ministry. but. My background has been so multifaceted. I'm grateful for it. I feel a little bit like Forrest Gump, 
not quite with the accent. But, you know, um, I had my major conversion in college. Uh, I transferred from UCLA to Franciscan University of Steubenville, where I wanted to be with other weirdos who were radical for Jesus yeah, Christ and their yeah. faith. Um, after I graduated from Steubenville, I discerned for a few years with the CFRs, the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. Discerned ultimately that wasn't my call. I went back home. I got my master's degree in marriage and family therapy. I wanted to be a, a counselor who could help individuals, couples, and families, and I did that for about a year. And then I came to realize, I don't like listening to people's problems all day. <laughs> like, I can't do this for 30 years, Father. <laughs> so um, naturally, uh, well, not naturally, more providentially, the next step was God opened this door for me to do full-time ministry. So I started speaking at local youth groups and parishes, and local events became more regional, national, and international opportunities. So I'm profoundly grateful, Father. But um, from that whole gamut of experiences, I feel like I've learned by virtue of my mistakes, but also by virtue of some fantastic advice that has been given to me throughout that time on what makes for a good path to being a Catholic adult in our world. You know, uh, the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament is filled with wisdom that has a lot to do with everyday activities, you know, dealing with money, relationships, uh, inter interpersonal relationships with other people. What kind of attitude should we have in our dealings with people? What kind of... Um, thoughts and attitudes are blessed by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to take sort of that wisdom and do my best to uh, kind of package it in a way that millennials could relate to. Yeah. And so that's what I'm speaking on. So from relationships to discerning your vocation to finances to what am I even here for? Um, these are all fundamental questions that regardless of age we all have. Yeah. You know one thing I reflect more on the older I get too is just you know practicing what the gospel teaches the church teaches about simple yeah. virtues you know how that is so much easier in life you know when we really you know work on that stuff it keeps us out of a lot of trouble <laughs> a lot <laughs> of problems <laughs> <laughs> and uh do you, do you teach them particular virtues or you talk about certain themes like that gosh or? there's mm -hmm. so many virtues mm -hmm. right i mean but ultimately you know we have faith hope and love which yeah. are, the, are the principal ones but you know just uh, wisdom i mean authentic love as it pertains to relationships, chastity, um, doing things... That's huge. <laughs> I mean, that gets Doing things the, the old-fashioned <laughs> way, right? <laughs> right. Some things, I mean, some old-fashioned things obviously yeah. need some revising, yeah. but, you know, yeah. I think when people say old-fashioned, let's just kind of bypass that. Let's just say, what, what is the ancient fashion things, i.e. the wisdom of God? Like, what does He want for our lives? And when He calls us to a certain commandment or demand or expectation, why is He imposing that in our life, right? Yeah. So often with young people and adults alike, they'll ask the question, why, why is God or the church so strict about this? Doesn't God want me to be happy? And the answer is, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Because as you're saying, like it's really hard to not live according to His principles. Like you see the the, the the value of the tree by its fruits right. and, and there's so many people in my life <laughs> and it's like it, it's so sad father I know I mean good friends of mine where they didn't do things in in the way that that God would want for them yeah you know yeah. be it in their in their relationships and their in their um, chastity and in their in their marriages and, and now you see things kind of falling apart yeah and it's not to say, I mean, obviously it's a tricky topic, right? Because yeah. marriage can be complicated, yeah. relationships are, are, are difficult. But when you make it substantially more difficult yeah. by not doing it in yeah. the way that God had invited them to do it, yeah. then it just makes things exponentially worse. Yeah. You know, I, I know it's hit me like, like working with young people and you see like sexuality is so powerful to unite the people and to be procreative and you take that out of the context of the marriage commitment, lifelong commitment, Boy. I'm going to be there, yeah. it can be so destructive, you know? And it's just hitting me more that I, when I see the devastation in people's lives, you know? And it's the church hard. is so wise, the gospel is so wise on this, you know? So but, wise, mm -hmm. and it's true. I mean, it's just God truly wants what's best for us. He wants yeah. to protect our hearts. Yeah. He wants us to be fully alive. He wants us to have happy and healthy homes yeah. and you know for myself I'm not anything special I just feel like I've been the recipient of so much mercy yeah. you know even despite my own personal sins and my mistakes throughout yeah. young adulthood 
um, God has always kind of protected me from going off the deep end, if yeah. you know what I mean. And now that I'm a married man, a husband, a father, and, and a young adult Catholic who is still striving for holiness yeah. in our day and age, I feel the peace and, and the joy and the purpose that perhaps a lot of my peers don't have. Yeah. There's a certain level of disillusionment. There's a certain level of being jaded. Like, psh, I've tried, I've tried love, and yeah. it's I've just got burnt. Yeah. Or, yeah, I just live for the nine to five, and I can't wait for the weekends, and I can't just I can't wait to just get thrashed because I have nothing better to do. Yeah. And then I'll have a hangover, but on Monday I guess I'll just start again. And it's sad. It's really sad when um, <laughs> the gospel offers us so much meaning in the day to day. And when people are just existing, but not living, or being fully alive in Christ, John 10, 10, I came that you would have life and life to the full. It's sad. And it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to spend hours on end on your phone. It's so easy to just let the clock tick by. Instead of digging deep and seeing every opportunity and moment as a gift, as a grace from God, yeah. and knowing that Indeed, like the creator of the universe wants a relationship with me as a purpose for my life. And it's one of my great heroes, St. John Paul II, which I'm sure many of your viewers are also fans of. He said that our life only makes sense to the degree that we make it a gift for others. You know, the proof is in the pudding that when our life is lived in such a way where I see it as a gift, there is a value. Regardless of where I'm from, how much money I make, what neighborhood I live in, whatever my circumstances have been, I have the opportunity now, today, to be a gift for others. Yeah. And it's funny because um, a, a wise spiritual director once told me that, um, and, and just to share with your audience, you know, it was a time in my life where I was really anxious, a bit depressed. And his penance for me in, in confession one day was, Paul, this week I want you to focus on serving other people, on loving them. And I see the wisdom in what he said because it got me from staring at my belly button <laughs> Woe is me! Yeah. <laughs> All the issues in my life! <laughs> to, oh, there's other people in this world, yeah. Yeah. and I can bring a value to their life, even by virtue of my struggles. Because God knows, and you know this, Father, we all do, that, that God has this mysterious way of taking the mess in our lives and turning it into a message. Right? When you think of all the great saints, we see them plastered, you know, in these weird poses and mm -hmm. they seem so unrelatable. But when you actually take a look at their life, you see that all of their lives were marked by suffering and limitations and weaknesses and things that they didn't want in they their They had the life. same humanity we did. Oof, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, you think of Saint Mother Teresa, who, you know, all of humanity, I don't know who didn't, you know, praise her as this holy, amazing woman. And after her death, we come to find out through her spiritual director, for 40 years, 50 years, she is in spiritual darkness. Yeah. She feels like an atheist. Yeah. She's probably depressed for like decades <laughs> of her life. <laughs> well, I like this story too, that I think the, the sisters, when she was with the Sisters of Loretto, they thought she was somewhat delicate. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then by God's grace, you know, she's going out there in the streets of Calcutta. Let's also talk about marriage, because um, I, I think we really need to convince our young people the greatness, the goodness of marriage. Yeah. I mean, they, they still want it, but just to really sell the beauty of it. In terms of adulting, how has your wife helped you to mature? How has the kids helped you to mature? <laughs> <laughs> it's the fast track, Father. You must. My goodness. Well, um, I think I've matured, or I've, I, you can ask her how much I've matured, yeah. but I mean, I've had a profound opportunity to mature by virtue of the fact that I have someone else to take care of now. Yeah. You know, they say that when you become a husband, you know, it changes you. But when you become a dad, oh my goodness, it changes you. <laughs> Why? Because you have this little human being who's completely relying on you. And regardless of how you feel that day or what's going on or what issues, you're, they still need to be fed. Yeah. They still have a poopy diaper that needs to be changed. <laughs> They still have the fundamental need to have daddy love on them, regardless of how I feel, or what I want. And so that teaches me, that's a school of virtue right there. There's just so much, you know, I feel like the church needs to canonize more married people, Father. And yeah. we have the Saints, uh, Saints uh, Zaley and uh, Martin, the, the parents of St. Therese. 
But I'll tell you, there's so much opportunity for virtue just in the domestic church, the household, right? And so uh, my wife, beautiful, beautiful woman, um, she was actually on the show with me when I did an interview on Life on the Rock there at your studio. I've seen her on your videos too. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Um, but you know, marriage, listen carefully all you single young adults out there, marriage does not solve your problems. <laughs> it just brings it to the surface, so you have to deal with them. <laughs> And it's true, you know, we, we look at marriage through these rose-tinted glasses. But don't get me wrong, there's a lot of joys, there's beautiful things about being married. But it's tough work. But it's worth it. You know, where every day I'm inspired to be a better person, a better man. When I slip up or I'm just, I'm not being charitable or kind or patient or I'm being selfish, it helps me to realize, you know, I need to work on this and I need to put God and my family first. You know, going back to St. Mother Teresa, she would oftentimes have these very simple statements, but they would have such weight and gravitas to them so that when she spoke, people listened, right? And the simple acronym that she would often tell people on three fingers is joy, J-O-Y, right? Joy, Jesus, others, and then you. Right. And that was really her motto, right? Yeah. That and you did it to me, yeah. right? Yeah. From Matthew 25. Yeah. Whatever you do to the least of your brothers and sisters, you do it to me. But Jesus, others, and you, she kept her life in that order. And she was blessed because of it. And I believe that through her spiritual darkness and her dark night of the soul or whatever she was going through, that was like a beacon of light for her. It kept her going each day. Obviously through prayer, even though she didn't feel a thing. You know, her faithfulness to her vows as a sister. But joy, that authentic joy that despite whatever I'm feeling or not feeling, she plugged through day after day, making it about Jesus, others, and then herself. But naturally, when you put your life in that order, your life feels full. Because when it's not all about you, you're not suffocating on yourself. Right. You know, your, your heart is expanding. You're becoming fully alive. You're, you're operating at the level with which you were created for which was to live in God's image and likeness, who is totally self-giving, self-donating, yeah. self-sacrificing. He's given us his all. His right? all, so, everything, yeah. totally. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for talking with us. God bless you, Father. Keep up the great work. I appreciate it. Thank you, praying for you guys. Um, if you want to find out more about my ministry, feel free to visit my website, pjkmusic.com. If you're on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you can look up Paul J. Kim. God bless you all. Thank you. I enjoyed catching up with Paul J. Kim. He's a great speaker. I've seen him speak to young people, man. He is really he good. Is he good. connects with them. And he talked a lot about one of his talks he gives at the Focus Conference is you know, the Catholic Millennial Guide to Adulting. He calls that adulting like, you know, maturing, growing in virtue. And he spoke a lot to us about in marriage, you know, getting married, uh, the responsibilities of marriage, especially for kids. You know, I love the point he made that those kids need mm -hmm. care and attention no matter what he was feeling right. like. He had to get out of himself every day to care for the kids. And we need to have that, that focus on others, that giving the others is the path to maturity. And I really love the acronym he gave that he you know, got from Mother Teresa, but the joy acronym of Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. Yeah. And that's really just the order of our lives that we do. Are, we are called to serve God. And if we think about the first, the two greatest commandments, the love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and then to love others as yourself. You know, that we find great fulfillment in doing all that. Right. You right. know, and whenever we act upon that, when we go out there and pray or go help a person in need, that fills us with a lot of joy. Yeah. You know, and if we're just so tight and consumed in ourselves, we're going to be lacking a lot yeah. of that. We're going to be miserable. <laughs> right. So, so God's given us a plan mm -hmm. and a purpose mm -hmm. for our life. A lot of disillusionment mm -hmm. out there, a lot of struggle and things. Well, try it God's right. way, you know, to find this fulfillment. When you think about the sacrament of marriage, and as Paul was saying, marriage draws you out of yourself. You know, you have a wife or a husband, and you have a, probably a lot of kids yeah. that need, they are dependent on you. Right. And however you feel, that doesn't really matter because you're, yeah. re you're really there to love and serve them. Yeah, you know, as yeah. a parent, and that's a beautiful message. And I loved his, his humor. He's got great yeah. humor. He talked about, yeah, we fail at these kinds of things. 
and we might be a mess at times. Yeah. But he said, turn that mess into a message for others. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we can use everything in our life, even our failures, we repent of it, uh, to begin again, and that can be helpful to others. Mm -hmm. You know, God can use all that stuff. So we all fall off the beam sometimes, and, but God's got a purpose. We want to stick to that as best we can, pray for guidance and serve Him, and then we'll mature. So that's our challenge this week, is to embrace your purpose in life. That means to embrace God's plan. For young people, especially like chastity, there's so many challenges out there for that. But whatever vocation, state in life, to embrace that purpose that you know God's given you and following the commandments and being faithful. And uh, that's the path to fulfillment, peace, and happiness. So may our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. And we'll send you into that vineyard with a blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. On the last day, I just pray that we embrace. On the last day, I just pray that we embrace. Praise him, praise him. Cause I pray the novena, I pray the novena. I've been kind of slipping, but I won't start tripping. Cause I pray with St. Faustina. And I know the grass is greener. Wherever I go now, mercy go. The bread of life on track, sir. Top, I'm happy. You can risk a mid time missing mercy go. How many say it's not personal? When all the unborn be the first to go. Red flag, Luke warm, walking with his eyes closed. You never notice it until you get a lie go. Cause all the time I've been wasting, I would have been thought God lost patience. But the more that we doubt God, the more that we hurt God, so His mercy is guaranteed to save them. All I do is praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Hashtag mercy, I glorify. Open up your heart and let it pour inside. Cause all the other stuff is really on the poor side. We gotta bring souls to the Lord. Cause you can never fall too low for the Lord. And even if you don't believe, you probably won't believe me when I tell you what I owe to the Lord. So I keep it to myself. Cause ain't nobody ready when it helps. Anxiety was everything I felt. But I just wanna help. But every time they put me by myself, I get to thinking that I probably go to hell. Yeah, God, I don't wanna die like this. I'ma need bread. I'ma need I'ma need wine, I'ma need mercy, so divine, when I confess, have mercy on mine. On the last day, I just pray that we embrace. On the last day, I just pray that we embrace. Praise them, praise them, cause I pray the novena. I pray the novena. I've been kind of slipping, but I won't start tripping because I pray with St. Faustina. And I know the grass is greener. Wherever I go now, mercy go. The bread of life on track, sir. Top, I'm happy. You can rest and make time, miss and mercy. Go. We all gotta eat. The truth gonna speak. The separated children are humble to me. You could be the rose through the crack in the street. Following a shut bit, life for the sheep. You might feel something if I stand next to you. Cause I just left church and the Eucharist at work. Every day inside my body, it's a festival. Need a boost, let Christ be the naked juice. Uh, most high, I beg of you, for your love is no substitute. Gotta pray for the souls who wait for the souls on earth to pray but never do. Uh, purgatory for the same round, pure love never fade out. Let the blood and water was gush from his heart when he died, put everybody flames out. They said I should have been a priest, keep talking like this. You never could fathom how much mercy, but I chose rapping. Cause I got a passion for venerating mercy. Lord have mercy, mercy. Dear God, I glorify, cause everything you touch, you purify. My life, my love, my pure inside, Read my soul, my crucified. On the last day, I just pray that we embrace. On the last day, I just pray that we embrace. Cause I pray the novena, I pray the novena. I've been kind of slipping, but I won't start tripping because I pray with St. Faustina. And I know the grass is greener. Wherever I go now, mercy go. The bread of life on track, sir. Top on half. The Eucharist and make Thomas and Percy go. Mercy, 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 mercy.